pretty bloody cold here in Ross this morning. It's pretty bleak looking, everything's kind of grey. Here at the 42nd parallel, kind of halfway between Hobart Town and Launceston. And this is the Ross Bridge in Ross. Now, we're here because the bloke that built this bridge was a guy called John Lee Archer. When he showed up on the island in 1827, he was just 35 years of age. His job, as soon as he got off the boat, was to become the head architect and civil engineer of the whole colony. He was in the role for 11 years before unceremoniously being booted, the victim of circumstances and short-sightedness. Had he been given more time, he would have built many more masterpieces like this. When people think of Tasmanian architecture, what they're probably thinking of are the buildings and structures that John Lee Archer put up. There's a whole lot of them. Before he got here, everything was temporary. The buildings were not built to last. He left after just over a decade with a legacy that informed everything that's been put up since. His story doesn't begin here in Ross. It begins in England, in London. Not at the Ross Bridge, but the opening of the Waterloo Bridge. The opening of the Waterloo Bridge by John Constable. John Lee Archer, aged 26, attended the event with his family in 1817. He recorded in his diary the impact that it had on him. Pageantry for infrastructure. Born in Kent to an English mother and an Irish engineer father, Archer had begun architectural training at the age of 18 in London before working in Ireland on large infrastructure projects. In 1826, through his network, he was recommended for the position of civil engineer and colonial architect in Van Diemen's Land. Archer's father had died four years earlier and his mother had just remarried. Perhaps the main reason for him catching a commercial vessel from Portsmouth with a dozen other passengers, a journey that took 17 weeks. We're down here on the lawn in front of the State Parliament of Tasmania. This structure here wasn't built as a parliament, it was built as the customs house. But it was so nice, it was excessively good that it was reused, it was adopted by parliament. They wanted to be inside of it because everyone wants to be inside of nice buildings. How was John Lee Archer able to put this thing together and all the other things together and have them all look really pretty good in such a short period and with apparent ease right from the beginning to the end. All these buildings look pretty good despite all the compromises that he had to make. The answer is fairly simple. He believed in Palladio, which is a philosophy of design that's really quite straightforward and easy to understand, but has gone out of fashion. It's evaporated from contemporary culture. In the 18th century, architects in Britain had consciously begun to revive the principles of 16th century Italian architect Andrea Palladio. After a mixed career, Palladio emerged in his 60s as the top architect in Venice, about the richest and most powerful city in the world at the time. Palladio believed that a building could make people better. The proportions of a building and not the materials are what make it harmonious. A philosophy of design well suited to colonial Van Diemen's land where resources were scant. We're down here on the wharf. The buildings behind us that the low sun of spring is falling on are the ordnance buildings. They were built by John Lee Archer for the military to store things like weapons, grain, any other stuff they might have kicking about. They're kind of humble buildings, but they're so nice that today they've been repurposed as art galleries and other high-end things like that. They're some of the most valuable buildings in Tasmania. You can't replace them. 
Now, the one on my right shoulder actually has an extra level on it. It was added later on. You can see how the chimney is a uh, different colour red at the top. And if you look, you can see how it has four levels on it, whereas the other part down there only has three. Why is there a gap in the middle? Well, there's not just a gap in the middle. There are gaps either side. The ordnance building was never finished. They uh, ran out of money, different decisions were made. It's just one of those things that John Lee Archer wasn't quite able to grasp because of compromises he had to make, mostly because there wasn't a lot of money kicking around in Van Diemen's land. The whole economy was run on convict labour and uh, desperation. So building grand buildings wasn't always the simplest thing to just go ahead and do. The grander portions of the ordnance stores were never realised. If they had, they'd be famous. We're here in Lena Valley, on one of these weird terrace bends that Hobart chucks up. Here to mention the building that you can't see, back behind those bushes is the old family home of John Lee Archer. He lived there with his wife and kids and by all accounts had a pretty nice time of things. He was a well-to-do bloke. Today, that house is dwarfed by everything around it. He couldn't have imagined the types of building technology that have been invented between then and now. Despite all of that, his home is still a lot prettier than almost all homes that have been built now. It's all down to the proportions. Technology's gotten better, but people's taste has gone off in some other weird direction. In 1833, Archer married local girl Sophia Maddinson, and the couple moved to Newtown, where Archer was granted five acres of land. He built them a stately home called Jutland, sitting above a creek that today is in pipes. It had views across Newtown and beyond. There's always a fly in the ointment. Archer gets credit for building all of the structures. In designing them, his brain did the heavy lifting, but the actual heavy lifting was done by convicts, imprisoned workers who were punished if they didn't work hard enough. To plant a garden is to have a belief in the future. John Lee Archer had visions of the future. He saw things way out into the distance. There was a building he wanted to build on the domain, perhaps in the botanic or gardens. It was a glass house. It never got a chance to cut ground. If it was here, it would look great because it looked great then because the proportions were right. Proportions are timeless. They look good in the ancient. They look good way out into the future unknown. This is one of these things that he didn't get to build, but it's a tantalising thought that a place as nice as the Hobart Botanical Gardens could be maybe slightly better if things had have gone a bit differently. The hothouse proposed to be built in the Domain Garden was submitted in 1829 and approved two days later, but never built. 50 by 15 feet, heated by a duct from a stove. The glass front, which would have been subdivided into rectangles, looks not unlike a modern city office building. Nobody ever gets everything that they want and that's true for Archer. He began drawing a new governor's residence within a month of arriving. It would have been his greatest work. A long two-storey building was planned with a Georgian front and Roman Doric columns. Construction was delayed again and again until it never happened, partly because of what happened next. In 1836, Captain Roger Kelsall of the Royal Engineers arrived in Van Diemen's Land and assumed responsibility for all military building projects. A year later, Lieutenant Governor Franklin arrived. Experiencing a decline in revenue, Franklin, perhaps not fully appreciative of the value of Archer's work, made his position redundant. With a snap, the aesthetic revolution was permanently interrupted. Archer could have returned to Ireland, but he now had a family of his own in Tasmania. 
resorting to the role of police magistrate in the district of Horton. Right up until his death, he continued to design smaller scale buildings around Stanley. He died in 1852, aged 61. The appointment of Archer marked the start of an important period of early island architecture. The things that he built would, in terms of style, be the foundation for all the other buildings to reference. For over a decade, Archer's skill had been acknowledged by the military and by the contemporary press. The newspapers liked him. Two centuries later, his buildings don't just look nice, they're still standing, having not fallen due to poor fidelity. Archer built bridges and causeways and churches and homes and jails and hospitals and lighthouses. He designed part of the harbour in Hobart and he redirected the flow of the rivulet. He had other plans too, but the drawings have been lost. The dog and I here in St David's Park, it used to be St David's graveyard. They took all the tombstones out about 100 years ago. They left the best things though. And this is maybe the very best of the best things. This is the monument for Governor Collins. Collins set up Hobart. He did the work of the military. John Lee Archer showed up and he made the place look nice. He made the place pretty. This object here was made by John Lee Archer. Archer's body isn't in Hobart, it's in Stanley, in the ground that he probably never thought he'd end up in. The inscription says, per mar, per terra, by land, by sea. Collins was the governor, he set the place up, but John Lee Archer made Hobart and Tasmania more broadly a beautiful place in terms of architecture. John Lee Archer won't be forgotten because he can't be forgotten. If you come to Hobart, if you come to Tasmania, you will experience not just his buildings, but his legacy. It will make you feel something. And that something is usually a good feeling. <laughs>